Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in our session today. Uh, we welcome you to our session of Sahaja Yoga Meditation. So before we begin the program, we would just like to reiterate that uh, there will be uh, two rooms to do the program. One room will be for uh, the newcomers, the first time comers. My colleague Andre will be taking the session to teach them the basics about meditation and how to do the meditation or how to begin the process of meditation. And there'll be another room for follow-up programs for people who are attending with us for more than a week, second week and above, can join me in the breakout room. And I will I will be leading the session for the guided meditation and question and sessions. So thank you very much for joining. I am just going to break out the room. <clears throat> Please give me a couple of minutes and please make sure you join the correct room. If you're here for the first time, please remain here in this room. And if you are uh, more than a week, please join the breakout room by clicking the link. Okay. Now I have opened out the breakout room. Please click the link and join the breakout room for the people for the follow-up program and others, please remain here. My colleague Andre is going to take the session for you. Thank you very much. Just a couple of minutes, we will just start the program. Okay. I hope everybody has joined in. Uh, one more person is still to join the breakout room. One minute. Mr. Venkate, sir, are you here for the first time or is it a follow-up program for you, sir? Can you open your mic? Follow up program. I Follow was there up. earlier. Yeah. You are there earlier. Oh, okay, fine. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for confirming, sir. All right. So all the people for the follow-up program are here. So we will begin the meditation. And before we begin the meditation, of course, I would like to insist that uh, you know the regular practice of meditation is very, very important at home. Practice is what is going to improve the meditation. Sahaja Yoga is not theory, it is not just listening to lectures, but implying it in practice in our day-to-day -day life. And we will see the impact of the meditation in our day-to-day -day life. We will become more peaceful, we will become more balanced, more serene, we, we start solving all our problems, all these things start happening in the background when we do the meditation regularly at home. So the weekly classes is just for you to teach you, to guide you, Weekly meditation, a collective meditation with all the people who are meditating regularly is also good. But the most important thing is your individual practice at home. So having said that, let us begin our meditation. We'll sit very, very comfortable, very relaxed. We can take a few deep breaths just to relax. And we'll try to remain in the present moment as much as possible. Let us not worry about the past or the future. Past gives you depression and future gives you anxiety. 
So these are just thoughts trying to disturb us. So let us try to remain in the present moment as much as possible in this coming one hour. And let us dedicate ourselves for our own inner well-being. All other well-being outside solely depends on our inner well-being. If inside is okay, outside will be okay. That is what we are trying to focus. So let's dedicate this coming one hour for our own inner well-being. So let's keep both the hands palm open on our lap. Okay. You can see what you're able to feel in your fingertips and palm when you put it out. That is nothing but the Kundalini energy giving you information about your subtle system, about your chakras. We will begin the meditation by collectively raising the Kundalini and putting ourselves in a bandha. Some of you may not know this action. If you do not know, you don't need to do it. But if you know, please do it along with me. You can open your eyes, watch and do it along with me. So three times we are going to raise the Kundalini along the spinal cord. So the first time we will raise slowly. Go above the head and tie one knot with complete attention. These are not just hand gestures and hand movements. You can feel the Kundalini energy rising and coming out of the head. Second time, we'll raise the Kundalini, go above the head and tie two knots. Second time, we will tie two knots. Third time, again we will raise the Kundalini energy along our spinal cord, go above the Sahasrara Chakra and tie three knots. Because there are three channels in our body, we raise it three times and third time we tie three knots. You can feel the cool breeze coming out of your head when you are tying the knot. So now we will draw a bandhan around our body, that is we will cover ourselves with the vibrations, with the cool breeze. Bandhan in Sanskrit means a protective field. Okay, so it is called raising Kundalini and taking Bandhan. So left hand on our lap, right hand we will start from the left hip, go above the head and then come back to the left hip. So this is one time, we will do this action seven times because we have seven chakras. Second time, go above the head to the right and then back to the left. Third time, Fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, and one last, seventh time. So when we do this action, the Kundalini energy comes out of the Sahasrara and we are able to draw a bandhan around our body. Okay. Now after raising the Kundalini and taking bandhan, we can start feeling the vibrations again in our fingertips and palm. Now we will keep both the hands, palm open on our lap and slowly close our eyes. Last week the internet connection was a little bad, so I'm going to repeat the same meditation this week. Okay, so let us balance our left, right and central channels and then get into meditation. So first we will balance the left channel. So to balance the left channel, we keep the left hand palm open on our lap and the right hand we put it on Mother Earth. If you're sitting on the ground, you can touch your right hand on the earth. If you're uh, sitting on a chair, you can leave the right hand loose towards the ground. We use the earth element to clear the left channel. Chakras and Nadis are made up of Elements, five elements. Sanskrit it is called Panchaputas. So we use the Panchaputas to clear our chakras and nadis. So first we use the earth to clear the left channel. Complete attention on the left channel, Ida Nadi. How to put attention? Just see what's happening in your left hand, fingertips and palm. That is how you put attention on your left channel. Any tingling, pricking, heat, coolness, numbness, heaviness, whatever sensations you feel, just watch it, record it. Don't concentrate, don't put effort. Just allow it to work. Meditation is spontaneous. It is like your heart beating. Heart beats automatically. You don't beat your heart. Meditation is like that. It happens automatically. So just see what's happening. Just watch what's happening. 
and in this position we will take certain affirmations which are nothing but the qualities of the inner adult the left channel left channel belongs to the past so here we will say i am not the past whatever has happened in the past is finished and over i am not the past i am not guilty about my past i have got self realization my kundalini energy is awakened and i am no more attached to my past i am a new person i am not the past i am not the past and i am not guilty about anything of the past another very important quality of the left channel is the power of our desire all our life runs on our desire every day we get up in the morning we want to do something our life depends on our desire so it is very important what we desire so here we will say let me purify my desires let me remove all the impure desires away from me and let me cultivate pure desires how do i know which is pure and which is impure i will know it through vibrations if any desire is blocking my vibrations is blocking my kundalini is blocking my meditation it is a impure desire if any desire is going to improve my vibrations is going to improve my kundalini shakti that is a pure desire that's all very simple no mental activity no thinking so here we will say let me drop out all the desires which are not good for my meditation which i will find out on my own nobody need to teach me let me drop out all the impure desires let me cultivate all the pure desires like meditating regularly i want to meditate regularly i want to do my foot soaking regularly i want to clear my chakras regularly i want to improve in my meditation i want to establish my meditation i want to awaken the kundalini energy of other people i want to help others to learn meditation these are all pure desires which will improve our meditation so here we will say let me cultivate pure desire within me now as we are saying the affirmations you can notice the vibrations are changing in your left hand it might become cooler it might become more uh, tingling or pricking or more heat if it is more heat and tingling it means left channel is cleaning if there is a cool breeze that means the left channel is coming into a balance let us meditate on the left channel for a minute and observe the changes now after the left channel starts balancing starts cleaning you start feeling more cool breeze in your left hand that's the time you know you can stop it so now we will slowly bring the right hand back on our lap now we are going to balance the right channel pingala nadi pingala means right so to clean the right channel we will keep the right hand palm open on our lap and left hand we will point it towards the sky bend our elbow if you do not know you can open your eyes and see what i am doing so right hand on your lap left hand pointed towards the sky the ether element or the akash tatva one of the panchabhutas we use it to clean the right channel so complete attention on our right channel how to put attention 
see what's happening in your right hand fingertips and palm. Move your attention there. Whatever sensations you feel, tingling, pricking, heat, coolness, numbness, heaviness, whatever you feel, just record it. Here, now we will take certain affirmations, which are nothing but the quality of the right channel. The right channel belongs to our future, all our aspirations, all our ambitions, all our mental activity, all our thinking and planning about the future. Everything, the power, energy comes from the right channel. So here we will say, I am not the future. I do not know what will happen in the future. Hence, I am not attached to my future at all. I will do my duty and I will leave it. We should plan. We should think. We should not be without doing it. But we should not go to extremes. When we go to extremes, the channel will get damaged and then we'll get all kinds of diseases like diabetes and cholesterol and heart troubles because we worry too much about the future. The right channel gives you all sorts of physical ailments. So here we will say, I am not the future. I will take care of the present moment and future will take care of itself. I am not the future. Another very important quality of the right channel is the power of our attention. Chitta in Sanskrit. Chitta Shakti. Attention power. So we know our thoughts are there, but where is our attention? Is my attention running behind the thoughts? Or is it stable in the present moment? That is attention. That is the power of attention. That is the quality of the right channel. Here we will say, let me improve my attention power. Let my attention become very, very strong, which is running here and there like a monkey, jumping from tree to tree, one problem to the other. Let my attention stabilize. Let me clean my right channel every day so that my attention will become stronger. We cannot do it mentally. You have to clear your channel and chakras. Your attention will improve. Let my attention always be inside me, on my chakras, on my nadis, on my vibrations, on my sasrara chakra, on the spirit. That is enlightened attention. Attention becomes enlightened when attention goes inside rather than outside. Let me strengthen my attention. So let us meditate on the right channel for a few minutes and enjoy the clearance happening on the right channel. As the right channel is clearing, you can see more cool breezes coming on the right hand. It is cooling down. So that means the right channel is clearing. If you feel more tingling and heat, that means it is clearing. You may even feel some heat going out of the left hand into the sky. It's cooling down. Okay, now we can bring both the hands back on our lap. Now we will balance the central channel clear our central channel. The central channel is called Shushumna Nadi in Sanskrit. It runs along the spinal cord. The quality of the central channel is the present moment, not the past of the future, not the past of the left side, not the future of the right side. It is the present moment in this time, in this place, now, here. That is now. That is the present moment. And the power of the central channel is a present moment. 
so the more we clear the left and the right channel the more we will balance and come to the central channel and then we are in the present moment so here we will say let me strengthen my central channel by regularly meditating by regularly cleansing and regularly opening out my nadis only with meditation it opens out the more it opens out the more we can automatically be in the present moment we will not run in the past or the future you will automatically get sucked into the present moment without any attempt or without any effort that is meditation that is the power of the central channel sushumna nadi another very important quality of the central channel is the power to evolve to grow out to surpass your limits to come out of your bad habits to come out of your problems and diseases the power to evolve is a central channel so as you evolve you climb up the chakras in the central channel you come out of all your problems is the power of evolution from animal stage we have evolved to human being now so from human being now we have to become a superhuman being to become a very different personality dropping off all our bad habits anger hatred reactions temper lack of forgiveness lack of witness state lust desires addictions problems in life we are going to drop out everything and climb higher that is a goal of meditation that is the power of the central channel so here we will say let me meditate regularly and evolve out of my problems now what we'll do we will take the right hand palm open and place it on top of the sahasrara chakra and we are going to massage the sahasrara chakra in a clockwise direction seven times how we did in the first week program let us massage the sahasrara chakra after we massage we will close our eyes and remain in silent meditation for 2 3 minutes enjoy the silence and peace and bliss coming from inside our kundalini energy <laughs> Thank you. 
now we can slowly steadily open our eyes okay uh, i hope you felt good vibrations the meditation so did i so what we will do now we will just continue the meditation meaning we are going to remain in the present moment without running to the past or the future we are going to keep our attention in the present moment and we are going to watch a short talk given by shri mataji our teacher or guru so we are going to remain in meditation and watch the talk so that we can absorb all the knowledge what our teacher is trying to give us today so let us continue the meditation you can open your eyes and watch the talk and we are going to remain in meditation for another 10 minutes I'm sure Phil must have explained to you the mechanism of our evolution. As you will see before yourself that there are different centers at the different level of the body. And all these centers denote our different stages of our evolution. these centers cannot be seen they are subtle centers placed in the medulla oblongata means in the spinal cord and also in the brain <coughs> and the whole thing has been done very beautifully with great compassion care it's done very delicately and all these centers denote within us a kind of a growth that has been manifesting one after another but at the human stage we are still in the transition stage because we do not know the meaning of our life the meaning of our life will only be known when we become connected with that power which has created us the power that has evolved us the power that desired for our creation that activated for our creation and the one that evolved us these three powers are indicated in those three lines the left side is the power of desire which looks after the past the subconscious and the collective subconscious and the another one which activates is on the right hand side which looks after the action the activation the creation up to the stage when life started taking its form then comes in the carbon atom carbon atom is a very important pivotal element that was created at a point where it had four valencies which it could part depart or put the sea this came as a special catalyst we can say which started creating life now the life was created but after creating that life as a unicellular animal we had to become human beings the chairs do not grow this hall will not grow nothing is going to grow which is dead but whatever is living grows and evolves we have become human beings at a stage where that center is near the neck where we have raised our neck up where the animals put their head up a new system started building up within themselves by which a crossing took place 
and this crossing of the energies created these two pouches called ego and super ego. Because there was no outlet, the animals have both the feet and both the hands on the ground. It comes from the hind legs and goes through the four legs. <coughs> but in the human beings, when he raised his head, then a new system developed within him by which he created ego when he worked, when he took action through his mental and his physical capacities, he developed a system called ego. Actually ego is a complete myth because we really do not do anything. As I said, we only do dead work. We cannot do one living work. We cannot do any living work. And so the ego that is within us is just a myth that we are doing it. So this myth rises and the superego at the animal stage is pressed back. And when both of them combine on top of your head till about the age of 12 years, the calcification takes place and you become yourself. You become completely independent. The eyeness develops. That means you become like an egg. Now you are a separate entity, a free entity, which can work out the left and the right side, which is like a breath and the accelerator of a car, and learn how to use them to develop balance within you by making mistakes, by experimenting, you develop your wisdom in the center. Sometimes the human beings go to the extremes, as I told you yesterday, how they go onto the right side into the extremes and what diseases they develop and what problems they develop. In the same way I told you a day earlier that when you go to the left, how you develop your problems of emotional side and even a disease like cancer comes to you from the left extremes. <clears throat> now in the center is the evolutionary process, is the power of evolution is the power of your sustenance. For example, carbon has four valencies. That means the carbon has got the sustenance of four. Human beings have ten sustenances. These are for the sustenance of the human being. The center is placed between the pituitary and the pineal body. It's a very subtle center and has got two subplexuses. We have seen patients of cancer who are suffering very much, who are told by doctors that you will die within two weeks time. It's a fact. Now, if their kundalini is awakened, their cancer disappears, all their pain disappears, all their agony disappears, and they feel very light, and they feel that they have become collectively conscious, that they are saved. They all know that they are saved. Once it happens, the immediately the lightness of the whole mind, the lightness of the body, the lightness of your being is felt. And you feel so light as if you are floating. And this is what was promised and we should have expected. But what we did was to go back to the same old stuff which was thousands of years back without understanding that if it was the growth, if it was the living process, the living process always transforms one from another stage to another stage. Like we can see a seed, seed becomes a root. The root then has the shoots and the shoot has other parts one by one till it becomes a blossoming flower, flowering tree and then that tree bears fruit. And then these fruits also fall off. In the same way, if life has to grow through evolutionary process, there has to be stages by which we have to move. The other day I said that there are some people who are just jumping, dancing. Is this the way you are going to become? Why spawn? It's absurd. How can you be? 
how can you believe that such absurd things that you can otherwise also do it. If you want to jump, what is there? You just lift your legs, you can, you can jump. What is so great? Is it jumping and screaming and shouting and talking nonsense? Is it what you are going to achieve? On the contrary, you are going to achieve something that will make your awareness much more alert. The awareness that will be collectively conscious. In your awareness, you should be able to feed others. You should be able to feed yourself, your own being. And that is what is important. Now, use your brains. You are one of the brainiest people in the whole world. And use your brains and find out, is this the way? Are you going to do it? Something has to happen within yourself. And that within is just now. The time is today. You have to get it. I'm so very happy to see that so many people came today and that they are so anxious to get to their realization. Now, after realization, <coughs> when this ascent takes place, when the Kundalini rises and you start feeling the cool breeze coming out here, people may say, what's there in a cool breeze? It is all over, all pervading. You can feel it all over. Actually, some people start looking at the window. Is it coming from the window? If the window is open, it's that, that clear cut with some people. Now, when you start feeling it, you must use it. You must establish it. If you start using it, then only you will know the value of it. If you have not used it, how will you know what is that? This is the spirit manifesting and you have to find out whether it is true or not by using it. Supposing I give you 100 rupees which are Indian, which is Indian money, then you don't know what rupees are. You must use them in the market and then only you will know the value of what it is. In the same way, when I say that the realization only takes place by only one method and that is the method of Kundalini awakening within you, like a premium in a seed rises only by one method. There are not 10 methods that recede sprouts. The seed has got a premium which has to germinate and it creates that tree which you see. If you had opened your eyes to see the talk, let's close our eyes and let us try to remain in meditation for a few more minutes so that we can absorb all the words and knowledge what our Guru has given us today. Let us sit in silent meditation for a few minutes.
Now we can slowly, steadily relax. Take a few deep breaths. You can open your eyes. So try to remember whatever you felt in the meditation. That is the message you are getting from your Kundalini energy inside you. If you didn't feel anything, no problem. You will start feeling it. In the beginning, I also didn't feel much. But with practice, everybody will feel. We will finish the meditation by collectively raising our Kundalini and putting ourselves in Badan. We know how to do this action. So let us do it. People who don't know, it will be taught to you later. Let us finish the meditation by raising Kundalini and putting a bandhan. You had a good meditation, so did I. The last part of the session, we are going to keep it interactive. So I would request you to open your mics. If you have any doubts, you can ask questions. If you have any doubts in the way you're practicing at home or watching the tutorial videos, if you have any doubts, please ask me. Or if you want to share your experience, what you felt and you didn't understand what's happening, please ask me. Let us keep the uh, session interactive in the last 10 minutes. So I would request you all to please open your mics and please ask me questions. Please unmute yourself if you have any questions. Let's keep the session a bit interactive. In the meanwhile, I am just going to post uh, the registration forms. Okay, we have a question from uh, Vivian. Uh, he said, people who are stuck in the past are left-sided and those who keep wondering about the future are right-sided. However, what about those who keep imagining an alternate present? Alternate present. Okay, what do you mean an alternate present? Because the present moment is only one. There cannot be an alternate present. There cannot be an alternate reality. You know, reality can be only one. It is the present moment. In this time, in this place now, we are talking, we are attending a meditation session. This is the reality. This is the present moment. If there is an alternate reality, and if we are imagining, then it is mental activity, which is not correct. I know. So it's not the correct thing to do. You are either stuck in the past, or you're stuck in the future, or you balance yourself out and you are remain in the present moment. There cannot be another alternate reality for the time being, at least for beginning. Yes. So this is what I I I I feel about it. But maybe if you can elaborate what you mean an alternate present, I'll try to answer that question because maybe I didn't understand the word alternate present. Okay. And uh, can we sit on the bed to do meditation? Yes, of course you can sit anywhere. You can sit on the ground. You can sit on a chair. You can sit on the bed. Okay, but it is mostly recommended that you connect with earth. You sit on the ground. If you sit on the ground, the Muladhara chakra is going to touch the earth. That is the bottommost chakra in the base of the spinal cord. Actually, one petal of the Muladhara chakra comes outside the body. Okay, so when we sit on the earth with the pelvis on the earth, the Muladhara chakra is going to touch the earth. And Muladhara chakra is made up of the earth element, it will suck the problem from Muladhara. If you are not able to sit on the ground, you can sit on the chair and put, put both your feet on the ground. So at least you are touching the ground. So it is absorbing your problems. The earth will suck all your problems. So it is recommended either you sit on the ground 
or you sit on a chair and keep the feet on the ground. Okay, You can sit on a bed also, there is no problem, but it's better to sit uh, touching the earth. It's better. That's it. Yes. Uh, so any other questions in the meantime? Okay. I am posting the forms from week two to week six in the chat box. And uh, I am going to post the balance forms. Wait a minute. Week seven, sorry. Week seven to 10 and then week 11 to 15. So I have posted all the forms there in the chat box. Um, so you can click whichever week you're coming in to download the video by uh, email. Okay, so you'll get a YouTube link. You'll get the tutorial video for that particular week. Please, please watch that video and please practice it at home because we cannot teach everything to everybody in one hour. We are sending you material for you to practice and learn from home. So please do that. And I'm going to come back to that. By alternate present, I mean they keep imagining conversations with people they know, conversations that will never happen or keep thinking if the person was here right now and she would say this, etc. If a person does the above, will they be right-sided or left-sided? These are basically thoughts. Okay. So the thoughts are either coming from the past or the future. If we are imagining about the things or the wrongdoings which happened in the past, if we are worrying something about the past, we feel that, oh, I made a mistake at this point of time. I shouldn't have done that. You know, I should have done something else. You know, Then you are stuck in the past. Or if you are imagining that I want to talk to my friend like this, when I meet her next time, I want to say all these things. This is in my mind. You know, these kind of thoughts are futuristic thoughts. So by the thoughts itself, you will know whether they are from the past or the future. In the present moment, there are no thoughts. If thoughts are there in the head, you are not in the central channel. You are either in the left channel or right channel. If you are in the central channel, the mind will be absolutely blank, zero, shunya, it is called. So there will be no thought. And beginning of meditation is being without thoughts. That is only meditation, thoughtless awareness. It's called nirvichara samadhi in Sanskrit. Nirvichar means... Vichar means thought. Nirvichar means without thought. Samadhi is a state. So, thoughtless awareness means present moment. There will be no thought, absolutely zero thoughts. If there is a thought, it is either coming from the past or the future. There is no thought in the present moment. Okay. In the beginning, it is very difficult to be thoughtless. We cannot be thoughtless. Unless the Kundalini energy opens our Agya Chakra, we cannot be thoughtless. We cannot be in Samadhi. So, for beginning, we say witness your thoughts. Thoughts will come, thoughts will go. Just witness it, don't react to it. Don't run behind it. That is what we say. That is a good exercise to pull away from the thoughts slowly, slowly. But with regular practice and regular cleansing of your chakras, you will become absolutely thoughtless. There will be zero thought. Sri Mataji says she is thoughtless all the time from morning to evening. You know, not only while sitting and meditating. So you get power or control over your thoughts. If you want to think, you can put effort and think. But if you want to stop your thoughts, you will stop your thoughts. That is a state of meditation. So all day long, you can be without thoughts, without thinking, zero thoughts. Stress is a thought. Anger is a thought. Worry is a thought. Depression is a thought. Anxiety is a thought. Everything, all the problems we have is a thought. So if you eradicate the thoughts, you solve all the problems. That is what we are trying to achieve through meditation. Okay. Please send the fourth week link to my mobile number. Yes, Madam Vijaya, I will send the fourth week link to you. No problem. Thank you for giving me your mobile number. So, are there any other questions? Anything else before you want to close? Okay. If you do not have any questions, we will close the session for this week. Again, I would remind you, I would request you, please practice the meditation at home every day. 
That is the most important thing. If you don't practice, the meditation doesn't improve. It becomes slow. It becomes stagnant. We have to practice every day. We have to water the plant every day so that it becomes a mighty tree. So we have to take care of the plant. So we have to meditate every day. So please practice the meditation. Please watch the tutorial videos as per your week. Learn it. Practice at home. Come back and join our sessions in the next 15 weeks. Learn more to establish your meditation. Thank you very much for joining with us today and uh, have a nice week. Thank you very much. When you start using the energy of these centers, say too much on the right, and it starts, moving more towards the right and there's a constriction and the power becomes less because you are exhausting going more towards the right side suddenly something happens and from the left if there's a jerk then the connection is completely broken this is on its own it starts working on its own that's we can say that this has become malignant mm. i have no relationship with the whole to have the proportionate growth. So if the nose starts developing, it can cover your eyes, and cover your mouth, everything. This is how a cancer is set in. Or any other disease, so many psychosomatic diseases are nothing but somatic is from the right side. And when the psyche gives in, then it becomes a psychosomatic disease. There are so many diseases which are more psychosomatic than physical. And these, we call them as incurable, can be easily cured by Kundalini awakening because when Kundalini passes through this, she just integrates them. For example, she's going like this, then she goes into this, integrates them. Just like she strings them mm. like pearls. pearls yeah. And so they are brought round. And also she nourishes that center. That's how people get cured. As we said a little bit earlier, we will dedicate the last part of our program to questions and answers. And I will ask my colleague DJ if can uh, if you can hear me, DJ. Yes, I can hear you very well, Andre. Right, DJ, would you please take over the question and answer session? Yes, thank please. you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. To uh, welcome to all the participants. Good morning. Thank you for attending our session today. And uh, I hope you had a good meditation with my colleague, Andre. So as he said, let's dedicate the last 10 minutes or five minutes for question and answer sessions. I would request you to open your mics, ask questions if you didn't understand anything, or if you want to share your experience, what you felt in the meditation, anything at all, please ask questions. Please open your mics. Let us be interactive in the last part of the session. Hello, Mr. Sahar. Please, do you have any questions? Hi, how are you? <clears throat> I'm fine. Thank you very much for the session. It's really helpful. Yes, but madam. I just wanted to ask, like, you know, when I was um, reaching for my sensation in my hands, I felt like a tingling mm -hmm. in uh, my thumb and my index and my middle finger, just okay. like on the left side. Mm -hmm. And the left hand, it felt really lighter than the right one. I had no feeling in the right hand. Mm -hmm. Is there any explanation to that? Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, it, it is a wonderful question. Uh, actually, when we come to the session for the very first time in Sahaja Yoga, and when, the, when we activate this energy within us, this energy which is lying in our sacrum bone, when this energy activates for the first time, what happens? it starts giving out signals and you are able to feel those signals in your fingertips and palm for beginner, for beginning, okay, in the starters, okay. So what we are expecting to feel is tingling sensation or a pricking sensation or pain or numbness, heaviness, you know, these kind of sensations you may feel in the fingertips and palm, okay. So if you were able to feel those sensations in your thumb, index finger and middle finger okay these three fingers represent three different chakras this thumb is mm -hmm. the uh, swadhisthan chakra let me pull out a screenshot for you just hold the a minute heart chakra. the heart 
the one minute now. Let me pull the uh, screenshot for you. Sorry, just give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. Just a minute. That's a very interesting question. I uh, would be very happy to extend that to you. Just a moment. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. All right. I got the picture out. All right. Hope everybody can see the screen now. Okay. So the chakras are placed in the spinal cord at the level of the plexus in the spinal column. Okay. And the nerves which are coming from those plexus, not the chakras, but the plexus in the spinal cord, come and terminate in our fingertips and palm. Okay, So every fingertip and the center of the palm and the base of the palm, you can see the numbers 1 to 7 written there. Okay, So these fingertips and palm, these locations, represent different chakras in our body. Okay, So this is showing exactly the left hand as you felt today. So the thumb is, shows number 2, which means uh, uh, the Swadhisthan chakra. The index finger is the Vishuddhi chakra and the third finger, the middle finger is the Nabi chakra. It says number three. Okay. So if you feel a tingling sensation, that indicates that the energy was working on these chakras on the left channel and you are able to feel it. Okay. If the energy is not awakened, you cannot feel these sensations. So for beginning, it is a very good sign that you are able to feel it. And it shows clearly that the energy was awakened and it was working on your chakras. Okay. That's what it exactly Thank you means. Very much. Okay. Thank and you, 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 you said you said you felt very light on the left side and you didn't feel anything yeah. on the right side. Okay. So oh, that also you. means the left channel was working today. Uh, the Kundalini energy was working on the left channel today and you were able to feel it. Maybe there was a little bit of stress on the right side. So you are not able to feel mm -hmm. the sensations. Okay. But that is what we are trying to achieve. So with regular practice of meditation and balancing out these channels, you will be able to feel a cool wind coming on both your hands, left hand and right hand. That is when you know that you are in a balance. And then when you are in a balance, you will not get any physical, emotional, mental ailments. You will be able to solve all your problems. And that is what we are trying to achieve in the meditation. Okay, ma'am? Yes, thank you very much. That was very, very helpful. Thank you. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you for the wonderful question. Good answers come because of good questions. Thank you. Anybody else? You would like to ask any question, any doubt, or how you felt in the meditation? If anybody would like to share what you felt, please go ahead. In the meantime, I'm also going to post a registration form in the chat box. Okay, You can all see that. Uh, I would request you to click on that and register yourself so that you will get the lessons for you to practice at home. Okay, You will get a tutorial video from YouTube from our channel so you can watch it at home and you can practice it. You can refresh your memory of what you learned today. So the most important thing in Sahaja Yoga meditation is practice. Okay, Weekly once you come here for a class, you come here for a session, that is all fine. But the most important thing is the practice at home. You know, your individual meditation practice. Our teacher recommends that if you can practice every day, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, not more than that, it's very good. But to put a new routine in our life is difficult. I do understand that in the beginning. So if you can meditate in the coming week, maybe a couple of times a week, two or three days a week at least, if you can meditate every day, it's very good. You know, Try to practice the meditation at home. By practice, you will be able to improve the meditation. Your sensations will improve. And I would request you to watch the session at home, the videos we are sending so that you can learn. And then you can come back to our sessions every week. We have free sessions for the next 15 weeks where you will be taught about all the chakras, all the channels, what are the diseases, how to solve your problems, how to heal your diseases, all these things we are going to teach you. So it will be very interesting for you to learn. So I would request you to practice the meditation at home and then come back to our sessions every week so you learn better, you learn more. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to give another five minutes for you to register in the form and I'm going to keep the mic open for you all to ask questions. If you have any questions, you can still ask. Please go ahead. And if you have any problems registering in the form, please put your mobile number there, WhatsApp number, and, uh, and I will send you the first week lesson by WhatsApp also. Okay, please go ahead.
you can even put your uh, message in the chat box if you have any doubts. Mr. Hunayn, yes, I got your number, sir, and I'm going to send you the tutorial video. No worries. If anybody else has any questions, you can ask. Thank you, Mr. Hone. Thank you for your appreciation. Yes, as, uh, as requested, please practice at home. That is the most important thing in meditation, the individual practice. We are just guiding you on a weekly basis. But the most important thing is your own practice. That is what is going to help you. How to overcome overthinking? Okay, very good. Uh, what Shimataji, our teacher says, that a normal human being can be cannot be, sorry, cannot be without thinking. Because now we both are talking, we are interacting, you are in the present moment. But if you are sitting alone, there will be thoughts in your head. It is impossible for a human being to be without thoughts. Yeah, These thoughts are either coming from the past, you worry something about the past, or you worry something about the future, what is going to happen in the future. So the thoughts are either coming from the past or the future, which is the left channel and the right channel. In the present moment, in the central channel, there are no thoughts. Actually, there is a gap in between two thoughts. In Sanskrit, it is called as vilamba. Okay. So, we as normal human beings cannot put our attention on this gap. We cannot penetrate into this gap. What has to happen is with the regular practice of meditation, our kundalini energy will start opening the chakras and there is a chakra on the forehead, which is called as the agya chakra or they call it as third eye in yoga terms. It's a very famous term everybody likes to talk about, the third eye. So that is the Agya Chakra. When this energy center is opened by the uh, Kundalini energy, our thoughts will first stop reducing slowly, slowly. So our stress will go down. And one point of time, all the thoughts will completely stop and become zero. There will be no thought in our head, which is an impossible thing for human being to achieve. So it comes with the regular practice of meditation. It is called as thoughtless awareness. You are aware, but no thoughts in your head. That is the starting point of meditation. What we are trying doing now is we are trying to get into meditation. Okay, we are just starting to move in that direction. So the question what you asked is very valid. How to overcome thinking? This is how we overcome thinking. By meditating, by clearing our chakras and making our kundalini strong and opening our agya chakra. Sometimes a fear always follows us. Fear, anxiety, worry, stress, depression, anything is a thought in our mind. Yeah, Fear is a thought. Anxiety is a thought. Worry is a thought. Anger is a thought. Hatred is a thought. Everything is a thought. So, these thoughts will reduce and become zero when we become strong in our meditation. So, that is what we are trying to achieve to overcome our thoughts. Thank you for your question. Any other questions? Uh, I think my battery seems to be a little low. Andre, can you take over for a minute? Let me take the charger cable if anybody else wants to ask any question. Can you hear me, Andre? Oh, no, my colleague is not there. He's also not well today, actually. Okay, so... If you do not have any thoughts, I'm sorry, my battery is a little down. I think it might drop out anytime. Thank you for attending our session. I would request you to post your mobile numbers in the chat box so that I can send you the session. Please practice the meditation at home and then come back to our sessions every week for the next 15 weeks so you can learn. Sahaj Yoga meditation is always free, not for this 15 weeks. I am practicing for 15 years. I have not paid any money to anybody. So it is absolutely free of cost, this knowledge for you. Please come back and make use of the knowledge and improve yourself. Thank you very much for attending our session today and hope to see you in the follow-up sessions every week. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Thank you for your number, Sahar. Thank you, sir. See you next week.
Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. tell me, Sahar, what about next Sorry. week? I said thank you very much.